Hi guys, I thought I'd give you a little bit of a quick revision about how to go about harmonizing a melody using your diatonic chords. Now I've had a few people come to me and it didn't seem like anyone was particularly confident with the exercises that we've been doing in class. I thought I'd give a little run through just to make sure everyone is on task or at least understanding what I'm talking about. Okay, so you can see here I've got the first part of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and below it we've got our diatonic scale of C major, remembering that no sharps, no flats in the key signature, mean that it's either C major or A minor. Of course we start with C and we end with C, there's no sharps or G sharps as we might expect from the harmonic minor, which would be A harmonic minor. So I'm going to say it's going to be C major. Our diatonic scale, C to B, 1, 2 minor, 3 minor, 4 major, 5 major, 6 minor, 7 diminished. If we go ahead and build our diatonic triads, I'm going to go through and do that really quickly with my Sibelius shortcuts. Okay, so we've got chord, um, and this is C major. We've got D minor, we've got E minor, we've got F major, we've got G major, we've got um, A minor, we've got B diminished. Okay, so that's there. We've got a diatonic triad, uh, harmonization of the C major scale. Okay, so you might be thinking, okay, fantastic, what do I do now? How do I know which chords I can pick? Well, to do that, we need to look at each bar individually. Now, remember I said you could either choose to harmonize a bar as a whole, or you might choose to only harmonize half a bar with, um, with a chord. For now, I'm gonna just go through the simple steps. Hopefully everyone will understand. Okay, so I've got my first bar, which has two Cs and two Gs in it. So I go through my diatonic chords and then say, okay, which chord has both a C and a G in it, okay? C major, I've got a C and a G. It could be one. Could it be this? No. No. F major? No. G major, I've got a G, but no C. Okay, so I can't do that. F major, I've got a C, but no G. A minor, I've got a C, but no G. So my best scenario would be chord one. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that in my little possibilities box up the top. Okay, so let's move on to bar two. We've got an A or two A's and a G. Now you're going to ask yourself, okay, A major. That's not A major. What am I talking about? Uh, A's and G's. In C major, is there a chord that has both a G and an A? The answer is of course not, because they're right next to each other and we're not dealing in seventh chords, we're just dealing in straight triads. So rather than try to pull your hair out trying to find a chord, let's break this up into two halves. Let's harmonize the A as one chord and the G as a second chord. So we go through looking for which chords have an A in it. Okay, let's go C, no. Oh, D minor has an A on the top. E minor, no. F has an A in the middle. Uh, G, no. A minor has an A on the bottom. Okay, so let's write those as possibilities. Down, let's write, so we've got a D minor as a possibility, we've got an F major, and we've got an A minor as a possibility. Okay, so let me just move this so we don't get confused. And do the same process with the G. Okay, so blah, 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 blah. Let's just go through... I hope everyone understands the process. I'm just going to go quickly and go finish my harmonization. Okay, so you might be thinking, great, uh, I've got my chord options. Now what do I do? Well, now I'd like to just briefly touch on something called cadences. Now, those who may or may not know cadences, um, I learned them when I was going through uni and they're very useful for these types of exercises. However, I want to stress especially in popular music, they're not the be-all and end-all, okay? They're, they're not what you absolutely have to do. 
but if you follow the rules of cadences or the logic of cadences, you will always come up with something which sounds musically correct, okay? If a bit dull, you're not going to write anything like Radiohead uh, or um, even Bob Dylan using strict cadences because it's, it's an older style of music. But it's really useful for these um, exercises. So we've got three basic types of cadences that I want to talk about. You've got the perfect cadence, which is the most common, which is called five to chord one. So you've got the bum, bum, sol, do. Okay, um, that's the perfect cadence. Think of that as the, mo the strongest cadence usually found at the end of a phrase. Think of it as a full stop um, at the end of an idea. Okay, that's a perfect cadence. Second cadence is called an interrupted cadence. So that's called five to chord six. So you get the sol to la, sol la, modulating uh, to the relative minor. So if you want to end on a bit of a, an interrupted or, or a change in mood to the minor, um, use an interrupted cadence, okay? So, and the, the last one is called a plagal cadence. You can think of it, it's also known as the, the Amen cadence or the church cadence. Um, and if, just a second, I'll, let me just play you all these cadences. So you've got your straight perfect cadence. Yeah, fairly final. You've got the um, interrupted cadence. That's your change into the minor. And then you've got your Amen cadence. Quite often also decorated by a suspension. There's your Amen cadence. So if you, oh, sorry, it's called your plagal cadence. So if you use those as punctuation in, uh, in your musical sentences, it might help you to limit uh, your um, note choices. So with that bit of information in mind, let's also have a uh, look at the rules of the cadences. Within our seven diatonic chords, um, there are three types of chords. You've got tonic, which is chord one, and chord six, that is home, okay? So you've got the tonic and the relative minor. After the tonic chords, you've got the dominant chords, which is chord five and chord seven, okay? So you've got tonic to dominant. And those who know a little bit about theory know that you go from home, away from home, to where, you, where you're going, and then you always come back to home again. So that leaves you with three chords in the middle, which is chord two, chord three, and chord four. Now chord four is a little bit special, I don't want to get too far into it, okay? We're gonna call that dominant prep chords, okay? So you go from home, tonic. You can either go straight to where you're going, direct route along the freeway, to chord five or chord seven, or your dominant chords, so tonic, straight to dominant, and then when you get to dominant, you must go back home, okay? The other option is you can go from tonic, to dominant prep, and then to dominant. Okay, once you get to dominant, you must go back home again. Okay, think of it kind of like a choose your own adventure. You can choose to call in somewhere on your way to your final destination, but once you get there, you have to go back home. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go back, back to our chord choices. Okay, so because we know we want to end on a tonic. Let's say we want to end with a perfect cadence. Okay, so we want to end with a five to one. So our last chord is going to be chord one. So let's get rid of all the rest of our options. Okay. We're going to end on a chord one or C major. And we knew that we wanted to end on a five one. Okay, so let's get rid of our other options that are not five. Okay. And then let's see um, where else we might want a cadence. So we have our first bar. Let's, let's have a little listen. OK, 
Okay, so a really obvious point for a soft sort of cadence, a softer sort of cadence, is this note. It, to, the, to me it sounds like it's sort of resting on home momentarily. So I'm going to make that a dominant chord, uh, sorry, dominant, a tonic chord. So here we go. And remember our, um, our three cadences, we've got our perfect cadence, five to one, we've got our interrupted cadence, which is uh, five to six, and we've got our plagal cadence, or our armen cadence, which is four to one, and that's a soft cadence. Okay, so let's, let's go for a, a, a plagal cadence at this point, because it's not a final point in our melody. So let's make this chord four. Okay, and now we can kind of choose how we want to harmonize this bar. So we might want to go, um, uh, we're at a tonic chord here, and we're at a dominant there. So remember our order, tonic, dominant, prep, dominant. It would make sense to kind of um, either have a quick five to one or a maybe a, a dominant, which could be a B diminished chord, um, and then go chord one. You might also decide to go a B diminished to A minor. That might be a nice choice. Let's try that and see what happens. So a B diminished to A minor, um, so we've got a dominant going to the relative minor, okay? So B diminished to the relative minor, which is chord six. And then from chord six, we go to the dominant chord and back to chord one. So our chord progression is chord one, chord four, chord one. This is a plagal cadence of four to one, okay? Then we go from the tonic chord of C to a dominant chord of B diminished, then back to the tonic chord or the relative minor tonic of A minor, then we go back to dominant of G and then back to the tonic of C. Okay, so let me just take a little moment to um, write in the chord progression. Okay. So we can see we've got chord one, chord four, with the plagal cadence to one. I know that goes against um, going tonic, dominant prep, back to tonic, but in this context, it functions differently. I don't want to get into why, but this is a plagal cadence, okay? Just trust me, the way it functions, it doesn't move. It's, think of an expansion of chord one. I, do more, I don't want to get too much. So plagal cadence, then we go to a dominant chord of seven, then the relative minor of six, then chord five, which is the dominant, and then a perfect cadence to finish on one. Okay? So, once we finish that, let's put in our bass notes. Okay, so I'm gonna do that really quickly using my keyboard and the note entry in Sabatis. You'll see that it's, it's actually quite quick. So, press N, I'm gonna select semi-breeze with my number pad, and I'm gonna type the number C. Already done. Now I need minims for the next because I'm changing every half bar. So press number five and F and then back to C. And then B, A, G to C. Let's have a listen to that chord progression with only the bass and the melody. It sounds a little bit, um, uh, just here, we saw that it sounded a bit weird. The reason for that is mainly because everything's moving in parallel motion. And we've, in fact, it's really bad because we've got parallel fifths. Parallel motion is never a good thing unless it's in thirds or sixths. Um, <clears throat> so we might try and use an inversion. Novel idea. Um, let's change this. So, actually, no, we'll change this chord. So, we've got a, a D on the bass. Um, and then we might choose. Um, 
to jump down to the A. Let's see how that sounds. So let's go from here again. Okay, that's certainly fixed this part, but here it still sounds funny. Why? Because we've still got parallel fifths. Okay, let's change this one. So instead of the bass going down, we're going to make it um, go up so it's playing a B on the bass or a first inversion chord. Okay, let's have a listen to that. All of a sudden it sounds much more interesting. Now if I fill in the harmony very quickly to the chords, this is what it sounds like. Um, here we go. And we want a... Very, very quick job, okay? Here we go. This is what it sounds like. Not the world's best harmonization, but it works, music, musically speaking. So it's really important to think about those, um, the diatonic chords, is the bass line of the melody moving in the same direction by the same amount? That's never a good thing. It can make your arrangement sound clunky. Okay. Um, also think about the tonic dominant, dominant movement as well. Um, also, you can see that um, it's really important to write a whole section, try a whole section, and then play it, play it back on Spalius, try to sightsee it, look over it, and then alter it. So please, 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 please do it in pencil, okay? Nobody's going to get it right first go. All right? Um, I hope this has helped, and um, please remember to come and speak to me if you're still having trouble and I'm more than happy to um, sit with you and go through it. But you need to actually do it and try it yourself. And there's, I'm sorry, there's no easy fix. It's just the way it is.